Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm really glad you could be here. So look, the stage that we all want to get to as entrepreneurs is to be able to retire, but if we even get there, and when we do get there, when we get there, what to do is something that a lot of us don't know. So today, we're going to be diving into just that topic. And with us today is Eric Geyer. Now, he's the CEO of Pure Insurance, advising business owners and entrepreneurs on the implementation of life insurance as a retirement vehicle and custom designed health coverage as well. We're going to be talking about all those things today. And with over 25 years of experience in Wall Street, Eric's a financial professional with a lifelong goal of helping people with their personal finances and retirement plans as well. While asset protection and growth is their central focus, exceeding client expectations is the reason that Pure Assurance has become the choice for many business owners and entrepreneurs alike. Eric, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Ty. It's great to be here. So a lot I want to talk about, I want to talk about, you know, open up the new stage as, as a retiree, getting to that point. But I also want to talk a lot about your specific expertise when it comes to life insurance, because I'm doing a lot of stuff right now with life insurance that I didn't know you could possibly do. I mean, it is a powerful, powerful vehicle. So I want to dive into some of that today as well. Uh, but that being said, let me ask you that. I mean, what are some of the things starting with life insurance? What are some of the things that life insurance can do for us that we don't really realize it can do? Living benefits are one of the most powerful aspects of permanent life insurance. Uh, so I think it's important to make that distinction. You have term and permanent, and within permanent, you have universal and whole. So within um, permanent, uh, it has the capacity to... Um, to accumulate a cash value that can be used for just about anything, uh, whether you want to start a business, whether you need to uh, collateralize a purchase, you know, pay for your daughter's wedding, uh, whatever it is you want to do. Um, life insurance uh, enables you to become your own bank. So you set the rules. And uh, that's, that's such a great aspect of retirement is that you're not really playing by anybody else's rules, but your own. So that's why I love it. Awesome. So what do you mean by that? I mean, give me, give me some insight because like, how can you actually become your own bank using life insurance? Yeah. So once you have a cash value in your, in your, um, uh, in your policy, you can take out loans at, you know, at 5% from the insurance company while still making, um, let's say 7% on your money. So you're making the spread that a bank normally would make by taking in money and lending it out to other people. Does that awesome. make sense? Yeah. So you're getting a life insurance policy, borrowing against the life insurance policy, then using whatever you're borrowing for a purpose of hopefully earning a greater return of five than 5% 5 of what you yeah. paid for on the actual money. So it's like getting yeah. access to a credit line for 5% without really anything to qualify other than the fact that you have the policy. Exactly. And there's no, you know, there, there's, there's no approval or decline. If the cash value is there, you know, that's, that's really all you need. So you don't have to go through all this business of getting loans. You know, you find a piece of property that you want to build a house on, you know, that's really hard to get a loan for, you know, for uh, just raw property. You can do any of that through your life insurance policy. Uh, you know, most people think that it's just a great death benefit uh, vehicle, which it is, but it just, it has so many other uses. Uh, and, um, you know, it's something that the wealthy people have been using for ages. Uh, people don't realize this, but, uh, you know, before Walt Disney was a household name, uh, he wanted to build Disneyland. Uh, he couldn't get investors behind him, and he used his life insurance policies uh, to uh, build uh, Disneyland in Anaheim, uh, which he opened in 1955. Um, are you a football guy, college football guy? Yeah, like I'm I a am? football guy. And I love what you just told me too, because I didn't know that. That's awesome. Harbaugh um, got a universal life policy as part of his uh, compensation package in Mich Michigan. So he's going to retire even more of a millionaire than he is already in salary. So it's a really powerful tool. They're used as um, as as retention benefits and, and um, you know, bringing on key people uh, that normally they, they couldn't get uh, businesses I'm talking about. So it's, uh, it's something everybody should be considering if, if they haven't already. 
So a lot of business owners, you know, tend to think they're going to exit their business and that's how they're going to get their retirement funds. And a very small percentage ever, ever do that. Ooh. So you work a, really a lot with entrepreneurs and business owners. So what are you doing there? How, how are you getting business owners on track to actually get saving for retirement instead of doing what we love to do, which is just pour all the money that we make back into our business? So it's really interesting. Um, I used to do institutional equity sales on Wall Street, uh, and then I kind of wanted to go out on my own. So I looked for an inefficient um, piece of the economy to work on. And health insurance, specifically for small business owners, is one of those places. So in the, in the amount of premium that I've been able to save the small business owner through these health policies, they've been able, without having to go in their pocket, to use that savings in, and put it in a life policy and let that grow. So there's no negative effect on their cash flow at all. And they're able to you know, just basically set it and forget it um, with their life policy. So run, that th run, run, that th run through that for me, how, how that looks. Okay, so um, we're in Florida. So a husband, wife, and two kids um, are on a Florida blue policy, Blue Cross Blue Shield, that costs $2,100 a month. Um, ridiculous. Yeah. They're healthy. They don't need to be on that. Um, I got them on a policy for $1,100 a month. There's $1,000 extra there now that they didn't have before that they can now use to fund a cash value life insurance policy. Okay, perfect. So very, very accurate. Now, a funny story is that I, I'm self-employed many years, had paid, you know, very equivalent to what you're saying, thousands of dollars on insurance. My company got health insurance, didn't get it because like, I don't know, I don't even remember what it's like to get insurance from a company. And then years later, I figured out it was like a tenth of the money. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Like, I didn't realize how much I was overpaying by yeah. being self-employed. It's outrageous. Yeah. So what you're saying is you're coming down dramatically reducing what people pay in health insurance. Then since you're already used to paying it, you're taking that money, funding a whole life policy yeah. of which then you can borrow against that insurance policy and make smart investments and get a greater rate of return. And then that compounds faster, I would imagine, and then yeah. gets you closer to your goal of retirement. Fairly accurate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really fairly accurate. And if you're in something like an index universal life policy and it's structured properly, you'll never experience the downsides in the market that, uh, you know, that impact performance on a long term basis. Because if you look over the last 20 years, the S&P, the return before fees is about 5.9%. And the reason that's so low is because you have to absorb the downsides before you can get back to the upsides. And, you know, if you're down, let's say 30% in one year, you have to gain, you know, about 43% to get back to where you were. That climb is what impacts performance on a huge basis. If you get into the right kind of universal life policy, you're stopped out at zero. So if the market crashes down 20% or whatever it is, you're at zero. Zero is your hero, what we say. So you're only taking advantage of the upside and you're getting stopped out on the downside. So um, over time, it's, uh, it's proven to be a very, very good investment. Yeah, it sounds like one. Uh, any other things you're doing to boost this? Because that makes a lot of sense. I come in, I save money on health insurance. I take that yeah. money, I invest in whole life. But yep. then I can borrow against the whole life to do something. Do you help me with the something? If you want me to. Um, from there, usually small business owners, when they wrap their hands around something, they get really, really into it. And uh, they they become um, experts on it. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm great. I'm, I'm happy to talk to them about it. Usually, once we set it up, it does take a few years to uh, accumulate cash value. So you can't touch it for like seven to 10 years. Um, but once it builds up a substantial cash value, uh, like I said, uh, you, you could use it pretty much for anything you want. So before retirement, is there a way to start projecting what kind of income I'll have when I get to retirement? Yeah, um, there is. And uh, we take a holistic approach to that, incorporating Social Security. Um, if you, because I'm assuming at some point, maybe you've had a job so or your spouse does so there's so there's a pool of social security annuity there. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we say to them, 
if you can if you cannot retire and take those distributions at your full retirement age, which is 66, and wait four more years, your money is going to grow 8% year over year in that social security pool. So that in itself makes a big difference. Um, also, uh, if there's a spouse uh, on a 401k, even though you're a small business owner, um, the recommendation is to only pay up to the company match because um, anything above that, you're subjecting yourself to future income tax risk. So it's basically free money up to the company match, but anything above that, uh, especially in this uh, income tax rate environment when spending has been so huge and it's about to get bigger, um, tax rates have to go up in the future. So do you wanna be in a deferred vehicle that's just kicking the can down the you know, down the road and, and, you know, being subject to some unknown tax rate that could really impact your retirement in the future or at, at where, where tax rates are now with the highest rate of 37%, why don't you pay your taxes now, put it in a tax deferred vehicle and let those distributions be tax free. Right, because when you the the way to take a tax free distribution on a um, on a life on a cash value life insurance policy is to take out the policy loans. Right, um, if you need it for something medical like long term care in the future, of which one in every two people will need, um, then you you could take out the the distribute take it out as a traditional distribution um, tax free. So, you know, the goal is to minimize the um, the, the tax implications as much as possible in retirement because people think that the person who has the most assets at retirement wins and it's just not true you can experience market corrections that could you know take uh, take years off of your longevity plan so you know we, we just want to get to zero and, and and that's and that's the that's the goal you know, how, how do we do that? And that's a good question because my parents invested a lot of money into 401k stocks, right? Yeah. But man, their retirement is like, it's it's volatile. Yeah. I mean, like the market's down, they're down. The market's up, they're up. So it's almost like you work your whole life and then you get to the end and it's just a crapshoot of where the economy is to determine if you're set for retirement or you're not. What yeah. do you do to help your clients avoid that? Because that's what I see a lot of retirees doing. Yeah, so what we've been finding out in this low interest rate environment is that people have a tendency to want to pay their mortgage off fast. If you are if you have a mortgage of something like three and a half percent, for example, um, your after tax benefit is going to be maybe two and a quarter. That's nothing. That's basically free money. Don't pay more than you need to for your uh, mortgage and put that excess money that you were putting to extra premium into a life insurance policy. Into, into an annuity, um, something that is going to benefit you in the future. Because the happiest people in retirement are those who receive those annuity paychecks every single month. Um, I mean, think it, think, I mean, you're, you're a small business owner, I'm a small business owner. When we started, you know, it's, it's a roller coaster of getting, getting revenue in. You never know when the money's going to come in. Um, you have a good month, then you're, then you're dry for, for however much of time. With, a, with an annuity and, and, and using a life insurance policy to bridge the gap where you, you may have holes, that's a stress-free retirement. So anybody who's on, who's listening to you, I would say get with your financial advisor, see what you're going to need for expenses in your retirement, and then see what you want um, it, for retirement. Like if you want to take trips or if you want to buy a vacation home, you should not have any worries in retirement. You should just be, it should be predictable, it should be boring, and it should, and it should last for, for the rest of your life. See, I'm always interested in this conversation because you've got the Dave Ramsey and his tribe of the world that's no yeah. debt, no debt, no debt. And, and right. I, I get it. There's people that are just irresponsible and they go rack up cards. I get it. But mm. I'll give you an example. Like one of my friends just bought a new Mercedes and she paid cash. And I'm like, why would you do that? It doesn't even make any sense to me. And right. I could get a car loan at 4% 
And then I've got a, like a friend, I can just give her my money and she invests in apartment complexes and I make 8%. Like that's just yeah. simple math. Like why would I not, why would I put all my money there where it could be earning me double of what the car interest is paying? And not to mention, if you do the car in a company's name, you could write it all off anyway. So like, what yeah. am I missing here? Because so many people don't understand this concept that you're describing of, hey, you can get a whole life policy at 5%. And if you can make eight, nine, 10, 12, 15%, it's a plus. I don't understand why people try to avoid debt. And in doing so, they don't understand that if you borrow cheap and then you invest high, that you get all the rate of return. So what am I yeah. missing? Why do so many people miss this concept? You're not, you're not missing anything. Um, the smart way for your friend to have purchased that Mercedes <clears throat> is to have taken out a policy loan on a life insurance policy that she funded with that cash that she was going to spend on her car. Makes sense. Yeah, that, uh, why not do that? If you're, it, it, look, well, think about it, right? She goes and spends seventy, eighty thousand dollars for a car. She's not earning any money on that. It's, it's, right. it's gone, right? If she has that in a life insurance policy, she's going to be earning, let's say, seven, eight percent on it, and her, and her loan, if she has good credit, is going to be, you know, three, four percent. So even though you have all that money out there buying this car, you're you know, you're paying yourself, you're paying the insurance company, the interest and you're earning interest. You're making three to four points spread. I mean, why I would do that all day long. Yeah, I, I, I did too. And that, that always, it, it always interests me of why people are so obsessed with having no debt and yeah. paying everything off or paying cash. And that's her world, right? She has yeah. all these properties. She rents all these per entire her job is to manage the property she has that she rents through Airbnb. But yeah. what I think is interesting about that is she owns, is insistent on owning all of her properties free and clear. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, it's great. I mean, she brings ridiculous money every month, but she's good. But in my world, I'm like, if you could borrow against these things at three or 4%, invest in stuff that's eight or 9%, like that just compounds the yeah. money that you're making. It just seems wiser to me, but I see so, this other half of the people that are obsessed with no debt versus investing that way. I think people are just conditioned not to owe anybody anything. And that's what it is. I mean, I think, I think, I don't think that's the biggest injustice that Dave Ramsey does. I think the biggest injustice he does does is to try and convince people to buy term and invest a difference. Um, they, you know, term, term insurance has no cash value at all. Uh, the best thing, in my opinion, that term offers is a grandfathered health profile, right? So if you're buying a term at 25 years old, and then it's expiring at 55, and you want to buy a permanent life policy, to have your health profile grandfathered when you were 25, it's going to be a lot less expensive for you to get a permanent policy right? Because you're going to be healthier at 25 than 55. So that to me is the, be is the single reason to have a term policy. As far as investing the difference, I don't know too many people that are disciplined enough to um, invest the entire difference uh, after they're paying their term policy. Human nature tells me that you're going to get a minuscule amount of people who adhere to that plan. Yeah, that's Parkinson's law, right? I mean, the, the amount of, of you know, uh, the need, the demand kind of e increases to, to be equivalent to the supply. So yeah. people save a thousand a month. They're like, I saved a thousand a month. But then all yeah. of a sudden, all this other stuff comes up that eats up that thousand. And I Funny. see people mess up that math all the time. Yeah, it's, it just, it doesn't work. Buying term and investing the difference doesn't work. It's so just, let me ask you a question. Why do people like Ramsey recommend that? I don't even know who would recommend term. I don't even understand the logic of recommending term versus whole life. Because the uh, bottom 75% of the population has a cash flow problem. The top 25% has a tax flow problem, right? So uh, the top 25% pay 86% of all of the income taxes collected by our government. So the goal there is to reduce the taxes as much as possible. Right. That makes and, a lot of sense. And, and, and Susie Orman is doing the same thing, right? They're talking to the bottom 75% of the people who have cash flow problems. Yeah. So they're trying to help them increase cash flow, not avoid tax con or, you know, avoid tax con. Right. A lot of them are paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. I guess in that case, it makes sense. So then it's about eliminating debt, eliminating as much of your expenses as you possibly can get. Right. Because people who, who have the means know how to use debt in their favor. People who don't, Debt is a is an albatross on your shoulders. 
It's really true too, because it's that adage that it's easier to make money when you have money. And mm -hmm. as I've it went through the, the trials and tribulations of being broke, running a business, well, let's, let's be honest, it's 90% of, of running a business if you're lucky enough to get to the 10. And then I made it to the 10 and now I'm like, wow, like making money is like stupid easy because people come to me with all these opportunities to invest in stuff that's not guaranteed. Nothing's really guaranteed. But if you just look at the risk, it's like a no brainer to get in and get an eight, nine, 10, whatever percent return. And yeah. it's just, it's a no brainer to put your money there and be able to get a rate of return. Or I have these people around me that have these opportunities to get in on stuff early stage, et cetera, where yeah. all of a sudden the stuff just takes off. I'm like, this could, could be easier. And it's interesting. I say, I tell you that because I used to think to be a billionaire, I had to build a billion dollar business. Mm -hmm. And in the last six months, I've really realized by talking to smart people like you that that's not the case at all. If I build a business and get out with cash and I'm using the cash wisely as you're recommending, man, I could use the money and investment of money to get myself the billionaire status without having a business that was anywhere close to a billion dollars when I exit. Yeah, yeah. And if you're in a universal life policy, for example, that death benefit is not fixed. So you can adjust that based on your cash flow needs. So if you want to use the money that you have built up in there to make strategic investments in other things, um, you know, uh, you can do that without sacrificing your, uh, your current cash flow. What about how to use debt wisely? Because, you know, that's one of the things that I love about what you're saying is that, hey, look, if you use debt smart way, then, you know, you can do these things, but let's not exclude the 75% that are listening to people like Ramsey and that aren't giving them the benefit of the doubt. Let's bring them into the conversation. How can you really, and, and I think whole life is a great way to do it. So we can go down that road. How can you really use debt wisely in, in what other kind of things beyond what we've talked about so far, you know, not getting a mortgage if the interest is low or using this money uh, to be able to, you know, whole life to get, to get a car loan at a, a low interest rate, for example, and get a rate of return. What are some other ways that you can really use that wisely to get a return significantly more than what you're paying? Starting a business, uh, you know, that's that's a great thing. I work with a lot of franchisees uh, and- yeah, Buying a business, yeah. Yeah, buying a business. Uh, it, it's one of the best ways uh, if you're committed to not just solve, uh, you know, the what what do I want to do with my life problem, but it, 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 it just- I don't know. I think debt is tied to who you are as a person and what your to risk tolerance is. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it if you're putting money to work in the right way. And I know a lot of business owners who started their business with debt and it makes people work harder when they know that they have debt that, that needs to be paid back and they're not just, you know, in it with fresh money. Yeah. It makes sense. Um, inflation. You brought it up earlier. We got to yeah. talk about it because COVID, I don't know. Maybe a little inflation might come out of the, I don't know, trillions of dollars that are getting handed out right now. Yeah. What do we have to worry about there? So, right. So we can't just continue printing money. We have a, we have a national debt of over $30 trillion. Um, it's, you're already seeing like building supplies going up five times in price. Lumber, for example, uh, distribution chains are, have been disrupted. Um, I think that uh, we're, we're on an upward trajectory um, for, of inflation. When you look at it, uh, you know, for example, I'm just going to talk about, nobody likes to talk about long-term care, but since we're talking about life insurance and since 5% of the population is going to live to a hundred years old, if they're married, um, it, it, it makes sense to talk about long-term care. The average cost now of a nursing home is about $90,000. In 10 years, that number is going to be $120,000. And that's based upon a 3% year-over-year inflation number. So it has very real consequences for your future. So, you know, it, it's important. And, and this comes back to investment too. You want to be um, invested in those uh, vehicles that um, that are inflationary plays, things like um, mining stocks, right? Um, oil and gas stuff, commodity stuff. Um, those are all th those those all kind of uh, are hedges against inflation. So, to the extent that you're able to, um, those are very wise things to do, whether in or out of a. Of a, of a life insurance policy. Um, but yeah, I think uh, inflation is going to be a, uh, a problem for some time. And I think it's going to go above 3%. What are some other mistakes or things that we're not thinking about as entrepreneurs 
that we should be thinking about uh, to make sure that we have, you know, exactly what you described, retirement, we don't have worries, we don't have to think about things, our money's working for us, and we don't have the stress of the financial side. Yeah, um, to me, the, the best, the best one-two punch to uh, alleviate the stress later in life in retirement is, a, uh, is an annuity and a, uh, a life insurance policy that's going to bridge the gap and uh, fill in any holes that, um, that, you know, any financial emergencies, any unexpected stuff, which will happen later in life um, that you can tend to. Uh, that is, for me, uh, creating a pension. You're creating a pension for yourself, right? Pensions no longer exist, really. Uh, so you're creating one for yourself. What about annuities? Talk to I me love- a little more. What should we know about annuities? Yeah, I, I, I think they're great. I, I think having a paycheck, um, a monthly paycheck in your retirement is going to completely take the stress out of your, um, out of your existence. And, you know, a, a, imagine that, you know, we're getting $15,000, $20,000, whatever it is to you a month um, in an annuity. With a uh, with a life insurance policy to back it up if need be, uh, if you're getting that kind of money and you can address, and it doesn't even need to be that kind of money. If you can address your um, your needs and your uh, and your wants, then you'll be in a much better place. But what a lot of people don't realize, and these are the people who are heavily invested in things like 401ks and other tax deferred investments, is that when you retire three of your biggest tax deductions are likely gone, right? You've likely paid off your house, right? Your kids are, are, out, of the, um, are out of the house, so you no longer have the, uh, the dependent deduction. And uh, I'm forgetting one here. I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm going blank. And, uh, and I said mortgage, kids. Well, there's one more. Anyway, taxes are likely to become your, um, your greatest expense in retirement if you don't plan properly. So what, what kind of things can you do to avoid that? Pay taxes now for, uh, for um, your, pay taxes now on things you're investing in and then um, let your money grow tax-free and take that distributions uh, tax-free uh, in the future. 401k, not a 401k. What do you recommend? Only up to the company match. So as you mentioned, or you mentioned that earlier. So yeah, only up, only up to the company match. Otherwise, um, pay tax now on your money and, uh, and use it for something like a cash value life insurance policy. Awesome. Uh, very enlightening stuff today. I mean, we cover a lot and I, and I, I love the way you think. I just think it's so smart. I mean, just the idea that you could take a client, save them money on health insurance and take that savings and start preparing them for retirement just by that one thing, by putting yeah. it into a vehicle that then earns a return over time, but then it can take that money and invest it into other things. It's just brilliant. So we only scratch the surface. So as you know, where, where can everybody go that's watching and listening to learn more? Yeah, uh, they can go to puresurance.com. Uh, also, they can, uh, if, if they want, they could download my digital business card by texting the word covered to 21,000. Uh, and from there, they can schedule an appointment with me. They can download some, um, some uh, relevant info. Uh, there's just a wealth of information that I'm happy to provide uh, if you have any questions on this. But definitely, everybody should be speaking with their financial advisor and um, re-evaluating your retirement on on a on an annual basis, and also health insurance needs to be reevaluated uh, because uh, at different points in your life uh, require different kinds of coverage, and you know one size does not fit all, and it's worth it to um, to reevaluate every part of your financial um, life on an annual basis. Eric, text covered to what? Twenty one thousand. 21,000. Okay. All right. I really appreciate you joining us today. Thanks for doing so. Yeah, I, I had a great time. It's been a pleasure, Ty. Thank you for having me. Yeah, same here. So listen, if you're watching this, obviously, as entrepreneurs, we're typically pretty good at figuring out how to make money. And from what I've seen, we really suck at saving money. I don't know what the deal is, but we're good at one, we're really horrible at the other. So hopefully you got a lot of insight from Eric today of some really, really, really smart strategies to be able to live the life you're already living, but be able to do it in a wiser way to be able to put money in a place where it can get you many, many multiples of 
return. Let's be honest, right? That's what we hope for our business. We are building a business because we know we can get a multiple of the value when we exit. But why not do the same thing with your money? That's exactly the formula that Eric just taught you was how to do what we're doing in business, but do with your entire financial life of really getting a greater multiple on your money. But we just, just scratched the surface on what there is to learn. So make sure that you go to puresurance.com. That's puresurance.com. Ton of stuff here. FAQs, testimonials, a lot of resources you could tap into as well right on the website that can help you through this process of being successful. And you can also text covered to 21,000 as well. Uh, so if you want to get more information, make sure you take one of those steps. Go to pureassurance.com or text covered, the word covered, to 21,000. And that way, be on track to be able to have the retirement of your dreams by being able to really create a multiple on your actual money that you're making uh, and be able to have the retirement that you really want to have. So make sure you text covered to 21,000 or visit pureassurance.com. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.